Hi there, it's Marcy from Learner's Edge here to give you a few tips on using Zoom to facilitate live learning sessions with your students. As educators all over the world work to move learning online, Zoom has quickly emerged as an essential video conferencing tool in every educator's toolbox. It's really great for whole group check-ins, individual conferencing, community meetings, um, circles, games, really any kind of social interaction that your students need. In this video, we'll walk you through a few tips curated from teachers all over the country to help you launch your first Zoom meeting and avoid some of the most common mistakes. First, go to zoom.us to schedule your first meeting. Once you've entered the details of the meeting, including date, time, audio and video settings, you can copy the invite details and even the link to send to your students. Now you're ready to go live, but first, let's go over a few suggestions to help make your meeting a success. So we encourage you to first adjust your privacy settings. We know this is important. Once you're in the Zoom page, go to the My Account button in the upper right-hand corner of your screen and select Settings. This will allow you to enable various privacy settings. There are quite a few, as you can see, to ensure that your students are safe. Uh, some of our favorites are the waiting room, where you can approve individuals to join the meeting one at a time. You can use the lock feature that allows you to lock the meeting once all of your participants have joined. And another good practice for privacy, aside from passwords, um, is to turn on the put participant on hold feature. And this will give you some immediate classroom management control if you should need it. it goes without saying, but practice makes perfect. So set up a practice Zoom meeting with your best friends, your family. Um, you can work out a lot of the kinks that way and learn more about the features that you'd like to use with your kids. So once you are ready to conduct your student meeting, we encourage you to log in a little bit early. Um, this will give you plenty of time to adjust your mic, your camera, and gather all of your materials. Also, as students start to join, you can um, approve, approve them from the waiting room and greet them uh, as they come in. Another suggestion that we give is to create a buffer activity for the first five to 10 minutes of your meeting. Um, latecomers can sometimes interrupt the momentum of your activity, uh, can throw the students off. And so plan for an opening activity that allows for a little bit of that movement. Um, you can create a discussion question, some kind of individual journal activity or, or anything that you can think of. Once everyone is joined, you can then lock the meeting and even hit record at this time. We also encourage you to create some kind of meeting rules, protocols, or norms. You can post these here at the beginning of your meeting and then review them each time. This is a great list here, including a little tip for those of you um, that like to have your students on mute. One quick tip is to hold, have them hold the space bar down to temporarily um, allow their microphone to be on, and then they can let go when they're ready to go back to mute again. All right, our last tip for Zoom is to be sure you engage your class in activities that help build connection and social emotional learning. Experts agree that maintaining routines like circles and community meetings like this really do provide that sense of safety that they're seeking. So here are a few suggestions. One, Zoom does allow hosts to create polls. So you can create a, um, poll questions and see what your students are thinking or feeling. You could do something fun like a would you rather or 20 questions where a student or you can choose an item, um, an animal, maybe even a place, and then ask questions to try to figure it out. Um, and then my favorite, of course, is show and tell, which is great for kids of all ages, young and old. Um, they can share, simply share a reading, something they've read, a book, um, a drawing, a stuffed animal, or even a real live pet, which is always fun. We just really want to remind you that as you move into teaching online to be kind and patient with yourself, 
uh, because it's only with time and practice that you can build that confidence um, and that capacity to facilitate exceptional experiences for your students. So good luck.